Good day guys, welcome to LSTV, welcome everybody, assalamu alaikum to everybody at home, everybody who is smiling to see my face, I'm also happy that you guys joined me today. Today's video is what I learned by converting from Christianity to Islam, a TED talk. Let's get to it guys, I would like to know, maybe we can learn a thing or two, I don't know, we will have to find out. And for those who are new man, subscribe down below, hit the like button. It's good to have you. <laughs> if you imagine a blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl from a mostly white community in Minnesota, you probably wouldn't guess that one day she would be wearing hijab, the Muslim head covering, and devoting her professional life to interfaith work. And yet, here I am. <laughs> I want to share my unusual and ongoing journey with you because I have learned some important lessons about religion in multi-faith America today. Mm. I grew up the daughter of a pastor, and I come from a lineage of religious leaders from Norway and Germany on both sides of my family. So doing religious work is in my genes. Growing up, I was highly involved in the Christian community. I served as a Sunday school teacher, went on mission trips, and used to sing solos in church. Wow. But as I grew older, I started questioning my faith. There were concepts in Christianity that didn't make sense to me. So over time, and after much thought, I realized Christianity wasn't a good fit. I left my hometown to attend college and ended up becoming a world religions major. I took an Islam class to learn about a new part of the world. Yeah. To me, learning about Islam, or any world religion, was simply an academic endeavor. But on a personal level, at that point in my life, a deciding being atheist was the best choice for me. Yet, as I tried to be atheist, I was missing meaning and community in my life. So I knew that being atheist wasn't a good fit as well. Okay. Continuing in my educational career, I went to graduate school to study higher education. While in my first year in grad school, I was looking to make new friends. And at that university, they had a large international student population. And I became friends with Somali and Pakistani students, which well, are Muslim. Muslim majority populated countries. Mm. And they were the kindest people I had ever met. That's not a lie. They were so open hearted inspired me with their beautiful character. Wow. They gave me food, clothing, and gifts simply out of their living Islam. I had never felt that level of hospitality in my life before, and it felt amazing. They had this inner peace and happiness that had me curious. So I decided I should look into Islam. <laughs> As I wanted wow. inner peace and happiness too, I changed my whole academic paper I was working on in grad school so that I could look into Islam. Over time, as I learned about Islam and its core beliefs, I knew that Islam was right for me. But I didn't know when the right time would be to officially convert. Mm. At this time, I was in summer school, which is stressful, especially in grad school, and I was going through many struggles. One night, matters were especially bad for me, and I decided I needed a break. So I went out on a walk in the middle of the night. What happened? And I talked to God for the first time in eight years. And that's when I knew my heart. I was meant to be Muslim. It was wonderful to have God back in my life as a resource that I could turn to. Alhamdulillah. This was one of the happiest times in my life. Mm. After converting to Islam, I spent my second year of grad school navigating my new identity as a Muslim woman. Wow. When I graduated, I looked for my dream job, but wasn't sure what I was looking for. Instead, I focused my efforts on the goal of finding a job with paying off my student loans. 
the alternate light. <laughs> Fortunately, at the workplace where I landed, I was able to pioneer some diversity initiatives. As a Muslim, I had to pray several times a day. And at my new workplace, they didn't have a place for me to pray, which surprised me as they had them at so many places I've worked in the past. So I decided I needed to spearhead building one. Before tackling such a big project, I determined it would be best to organize some diversity trainings so people could learn basic information about Islam and Muslim culture. Doing these trainings are crucial because there's so much misinformation about Islam that needs to be corrected, especially since Islam is the second largest religion in the world. Mm -hmm. It is the fastest growing religion in the world and in the United States as well. It's important for people to know about such a large population of people on our planet. True and that. You can be a good neighbor to them. Doing these trainings started to ignite my passion for multi-faith work, which leads me into how I built the quiet space at my workplace. When I first realized there was no place for me to pray, I started talking to my friends, then my supervisor, next our VP of HR, and finally our CEO and president about Everyone I talked to agreed to be a positive ally and support of building this space, as I could benefit so many people there. True. From the beginning of developing the space, I intentionally chose a secular name for it. I used to be atheist, and at that point in my life, I did not want to practice any religion at all. So I wanted to honor and respect people who don't want religion in their I wanted a safe place for atheists to use the room to reflect or just have a quiet place to escape. But I also wanted to appeal to the religious people, myself included, who needed it to pray and meditate. So I called it Quiet Space. Quiet Space. There was one hurdle, and that was quiet figuring out space. where the space would be located. It did take some time to research finding a space that is ideal for Muslims to pray which includes being safe, clean, private, and quiet. Eventually, I found a space that fit all those criteria. It took me two years to build, but now there is a designated place for people to pray, <coughs> meditate, and reflect. Having created this space means so much to me because it's an homage to my ancestors who are religious leaders. One of my descendants from Norway established 11 congregations in North Dakota. I am continuing their legacy by building a secular quiet space. Wow. In a way, I built a masjid, which is a place of worship for Muslims. But I built a secular masjid that all could benefit from. After happily paying off my student loans, <laughs> I was finally able to land my dream job. Wow. What I do is multi-faith work wow. on a college campus, which is a combination of the two degrees that I earned. Some of the student groups that I work with are multi-faith literacy, Buddhist and secular meditation, interfaith action, Muslim and Jewish student life. Outside of my day job, I enjoy giving speeches about Islam and Muslim culture in the community. One big opportunity was that I gave a speech at the first women's only masjid in the United States. Leading up to the talk, I dove into academic research on women's empowerment within Islam. For seven months, I studied specific examples on how Islam and Muhammad champion women. This process of learning was a reward in itself. But sharing that knowledge with the women there was the best experience of my life. Unfortunately, culture is used to limit leadership opportunities for women. This is true in secular as well as many religious contexts. But through my research, I found that Islam actually encourages women to be leaders. Muhammad celebrated many strong women during his time, including Khadija, Aisha, and Umm Warifa. Mm. Through my conversion to Islam, generations of pastors in my family, and being a world religions major, I found my life's calling of doing multi-faith work. With my unique background, I am able to help people understand 
that Islam is a positive religion and that Muslims are normal people. One person. <laughs> Not only that, but that the religion of Islam is actually empowering to women. With my complex identity of being a European American convert to Islam, I am a bridge between the two different communities that I'm a part of in my role as a multi-faith leader. By building a secular multi-faith space and doing diversity trainings at my old workplace, doing my day job of multi-faith work on college campus, and uplifting Muslim women through Islamic literacy, I am contributing to a more just world. Can you think of a way that you could be an active ally to both the non-religious and the religiously diverse? For example, you could visit a Sikh Gurdwara, a Muslim masjid, a Hindu temple, or a Jewish synagogue to learn about a world religion. Or you could attend a vigil to stand against the continued hatred and violence that many religious communities experience. I believe in your leadership wow. to support those with no faith or those in diverse faiths in your local and global community. Together, Together. we can work toward religious equity in this ever-changing secular and multi-faith world. Thank you. That was beautiful, man. That was amazing, man. I think we have a similar experience in terms of having friends who are Muslim because my friends are from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and amazing people, amazing. I mean, in all sense of kind. Those guys are very, very, very nice and they're very kind. If you saw on my previous video that I posted, my friend just gave me his bike, just like that. So those guys are really, really kind and I'm grateful that she went all the way. Beautiful speech, I like it a lot. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing down below, thank you for liking, I'll see you guys next time. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what video you would like me to watch and I'll see you next time. Peace!